You're listening to Partnernomics Podcast, where we discuss the art and science of developing successful strategic partnerships. To learn more about the suite of Partnernomics solutions, visit Partnernomics.com. Welcome back to another episode of Partnernomics Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Bregman. And on today's show, we have Miss Cassandra Golston with us. And so Miss Cassandra is leading an awesome company by the name of PartnerTap. And so she's the CEO, but also the founder. So we'll have an opportunity to, to learn a lot about uh, Cassandra's story, how she got into partnerships and then started her own business and exactly what PartnerTap does for their clients today. But uh, Cassandra, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to chat with us. Thanks so much for having me. It's such an honor. Cassandra, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to just start off by asking you to kind of share your story. How did you enter this uh, crazy workforce? And then uh, what was your what was your, tra- your trajectory like? What was, uh, I, I would assume, I would imagine that somewhere partnerships fell into that. And then what caused you to want to start your own business in this, uh, in this world of partnerships? Sure. So I you know, been in sales my entire career. And, um, you know, some people say when you're in sales and you're a top performer, you're like the CEO of your territory. So I feel like I've always been a CEO of something. Uh, But I started early on. And from day one in sales, I figured out really quickly that it was much better to sell together and not sell alone. And the way to not have burnout in sales and stay at the top of the leaderboard was definitely to find those partners that could help either influence deals that were already um, in the pipeline or actually help you get into net new deals. Um, So that was really my um, start of of working with partners. And, um, you know, I always had that battle with the channel teams of, hey, channel team um, manager of X partnership, who are all the sellers that overlap my territory? And how can I go meet them face to face immediately to go drive more revenue? Um, And so it was you know, years of playing that game with so many people on the channel side of our, my own companies that I was working inside of that I just thought, you know, I'm the top seller here. I could build something that basically connected salespeople across their ecosystems of partners around shared accounts. And if I did that, you know, mass majority of salespeople would do so much better. And so it was out of this problem of, you know, being on the sales floor, kind of butting heads sometimes with channel teams um, that I just thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. And so that was really the genesis of PartnerTap. And fast forward four years later, you know, we have enterprise companies like HPE and ADP and SAP, you know, using our technology and using it with sales teams, but also using it with channel teams as well. So, you know, at our core, PartnerTap is really about, is is a data sharing platform. So we're enabling companies to safely and securely take data that is inside of their CRM systems and map it against you know, data sets of their partnering companies. So this this whole thing around account mapping, which channel teams and sales teams have been doing from the dawn of time on spreadsheets. We're automating this process to help help companies find more revenue. So that's really what, what partner tap is. Yeah. So like you said, I mean, teams are, they're doing it today to some level, but yeah, it's spreadsheets being cobbled together. And to your point, really, I think the magic that your company brings is now you can make it integrated or kind of sharing that across so that the different teams can be coordinated and organized and informed and really take better care, more strategic care of the the impending clients. Yep. The client, the partner, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. So Cassandra, lots of people, you know, in let's say corporate America, they're they're kind of doing their thing and we all hopefully see some different opportunities 
to become more efficient, to be better of how we can take care of, like you said, our, our clients, our partners, kind of these different people that, that play a role in there. But very few of us say, hey, well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and start a business. I'm going to start this software company and make this thing happen. What kind of a leap did that take? Is Partner Tap business number one for you? I mean, it sounds it sounds crazy. So honestly, you know, and selfishly, as a seller that sold through really harsh economies, um, you know, to certain buyer personas, I thought, I want a company that is, you know, just resistant um, to any type of economy. You know, th this company would, would flourish in any type of economy. And I knew, you know, if we could build a solution that helped companies drive revenue, that helps sellers um, sell more, that help channel teams deliver more revenue to the business and, and be able to show that, I knew that we would be able to last through any economy. I knew that I would have salespeople banging down my door to come work at this company. And it's, you know, as, as somebody that, that, you know, had a, had a quota for my entire career, I just, I wanted to do something that was bigger that, you know, helped, you know, generations of sellers and then eventually companies, right? So it wasn't a scary leap for me, especially selling through really hard economies. Um, and, you know, we did not plan the pandemic, but when it happened, we saw such a transformation happen inside of the channel and our business just started taking off. Two weeks after the pandemic hit, you know, I felt like everything kind of stopped and then you know, companies needed a way to drive more revenue. They were looking to the partnerships teams and the channel teams. I mean, they had to find a new way and those teams needed to deliver. And so that, I mean, our, our technology has a viral effect and yes, we had more companies signing up in the first three months of the pandemic than we did in two years. So yeah. it was amazing. And it was kind of that prophecy years ago, you know, in a conference room that I thought about this, but not that I planned the pandemic, but now, you know, channel teams are, and sales teams are, you know, ready for, for this type of, of technology. They can't be face-to-face -face anymore and they can't build relationships in person. So, you know, being able to figure out who you should be building the relationship and around what data you should be talking about, that's what's going to drive revenue a hundred percent. So Cassandra, I'd like to, let's peel the onion as we say, and let's, let's try to really dig into kind of exactly what your solution is, right? There's some people maybe out there that are you know, familiar with a PRM, some folks that are familiar with different software systems that help on marketing mm -hmm. side, some other pieces, obviously we're all familiar with a CRM. Uh, there may be some people out there saying, mm, I kind of hear what Cassandra's saying, but I mean, what is this solution? So peel the onion for us. I mean, exactly what does sure. it connect? So number one, I would say that all of our customers, they already have a PRM in place. So what we are not, we are not a PRM. Um, they already have a CRM in place. We are not a CRM. But what we are is the connection point of large sets of data between partnering companies. So we'll connect in with a CRM, we'll pull in a data set, and we'll connect with a partner's CRM, and we'll connect shared data sets where you can see, you know, what customers are overlapping my partner's prospects. You know, based on the type of partnership you, you have together, you're gonna be interested in different data sets. So our company allows companies to share that. And then from there, they're able to go, okay, here's where we actually should be registering our deals. And so we're driving more leads into the PRM. Um, and then we're also taking information down to salespeople, which oftentimes need to build relationships with the partners. 
I mean, case in point, HP is a great example of a partner-led organization. They have reseller partnerships. They have, you know, they've built the book on partnering. They have, you know, a, a longstanding PRM system they've had in place. And now it's, it's like, how do we enable our partners to find those accounts that, you know, are great accounts for us to sell together? And how do we get our field seller aligned with those correct partners? And so our company brings all of this data from the partners and then allows the organization to basically have an ecosystem view of where we're overlapping in clients and prospects, companies that have a high propensity of to buy that you know, might not have transacted in a long time. Well, now I know these five partners actually have key relationships. And so if I can enable those partners to know who the specific salespeople are inside the org to help drive business, like that's going to help us win more. So the days of throw a lead over and hope it sticks, like there's relationships that have to happen. And it's not just at the channel level, it's at field team levels. And so our solution is connecting that. And then the PRM is already in place, enabling all of the marketing engine and, you know, the contracting of the partnership and um, tracking things to, you know, a close and commission paid. We are really that partner enabler to find the opportunities we should be working on, those deals we should be registering on. Because we know those more quickly, that's going to be immediate pipeline. Senator, you mentioned some of the clients that you have today, and these are some sumo. There are some big companies. Which size companies are kind of who's the ideal company for Partner Tap? And I mean, what is what does that kind of DNA look like of how you can provide the most value? So I would say definitely the enterprise. The this problem of account mapping across partners, everybody's feeling it. They've got teams of people trying to do this act. And it's just, it's, it's a hodgepodge effort between channel and then you've got sales teams doing it. Um, so absolutely, you know, our, our key customer is in the enterprise, but again, what we've seen over the course of this pandemic is that, you know, CEOs and company leadership is really starting to look at the partner team as, you know, very strategically important to the business, which in the past, you know, that was something that would happen in a later stage of a company. But today, um, it's been accelerated. So, you know, we have companies that are mid market sized using Partner Tap. Um, but, you know, the, the, the use case where you, you know, a company is, has teams of people that can benefit immediately. That's in the large enterprise, the mid-market companies. Um, you know, you you have to have a trusted relationship on the other side, and so sometimes if you're in that build mode where you're building net new partnerships and you're working on building that trust, um, you might not be sharing data yet. So you have to be at a place where you're either going to be sharing data. Are you already are sharing data? Senator, what does uh, what does an implementation look like um, as far as like what is involved? How long does it take? What are some of those parameters of of the implementation? So it depends on how companies start. A company can get on to our system um, in a free capacity. They can log in. They can load a list of accounts, and they can use that to you know, take in partner spreadsheets. They don't even have to connect to a partner and they can just map those spreadsheets against you know, their data set. Um, that's, that's a quick implementation. That's like a one, two, you're done, right? Um, or you can connect your CRM and companies can get on for free and they can connect their CRM and we pull in a large data set for them. And again, they can take spreadsheets and they can 
upload those or they can connect out to partners. When you get into an implementation where we are going to be looking at, you know, different account teams and channel teams and they see different data sets, right? That's going to be a little bit more lengthy of an implementation. So, you know, a couple of weeks to really scope and then based on, you know, their priorities, you know, implementing it. But oftentimes we don't need to have heavy involvement from, from sales ops. We can you know, do an implementation just with the business user. Um, and our team you know, really wraps our arms around our customer, walks them through the process, provides them with best practices. You know, teams are already doing this manually, but now we're taking you into a system. So coaching them through that and then helping them to bridge the gap with their partners. Oftentimes we've been data sharing with partners, but you know, we could do more. And so putting a system in place and allowing our team to help broker the relationship with the partner to you know, explain the benefits of sharing more together, we're actually seeing more data sharing happening in an application. Number one, you can just do more, but number two, you know, I'm not going to overshare too much. I'm only sharing what maps between my partner and I. So Cassandra, are there pieces of your solution that provides like some intelligence, if you will, or is it a matter of just kind of having information there and then the users have to connect all the dots or yeah. is there some intelligence there where the system says, right. Hey, look here, here's your priority. Yep. It's exactly that. So we're prioritizing for the user immediately. Here's the accounts that you should go after with your partner right away. And we call that hot prospects. Um, we also give a view to the partner to say, here's where you can help your partner right away. Um, and then with pulling in, you know, when we do, you know, more um, customized implementation, we'll be pulling in things like marketing insights you know, which accounts have a high propensity to buy that are in pipeline right now that don't have a partner attached that, you know, these three partners can help with. So absolutely, we're, you know, not a system erected. We are bringing insights to the people that matter most, whether it's that channel user or it's the sales user that needs to go and talk to the partner about these three accounts. You know, what people hate most is getting on the phone and you know, then getting into the actual data. It, it's so late stage. The data should be the first thing. We should know when we jump on the phone together, if we've built a trusted relationship, which data points we're gonna be talking about. You know, what accounts are we going to be focused on? We have these KPIs, how are we gonna hit those? What, you know, if we're going to be building these co-marketing campaigns together, we should be doing it around the right data set. And that's exactly what PartnerTap does. It shows the user where they should be hitting those targets, whether it's co-marketing, co-selling, um, reselling. It's, it's all there and it's very easily accessible. So in the old way, yeah, you'd have to dig through that. And you might not have even received the right data to dig through. So partner tap is really um, bringing that intelligence to our users. And that is changing weekly as both sides of the CRM are syncing with account ownership changes, account team changes, customer churn, you know, customer wins. So that's that's what brings you the intelligence is keeping in sync with both sides. You use one of my favorite words, ecosystem. So I want to I want to play mm -hmm. partnership definitions with you here for a couple of minutes, but it's okay. so interesting. We talk about, you know, we talk to partnering professionals literally all over the world on a daily basis. And it's I have to chuckle because so many of these conversations start off with, okay, so how do you define partnerships, right? So we have this, this channel lane, which is a huge place that, that partnerships take place. But then we also have innovation-centric partnerships, uh, uh, 
co-creation for technology partnerships. You mentioned marketing, branding, these sorts of places and pieces. There's so many partnerships that take place. So I'd like to just let's let's together let's define what ecosystems means and this ecosystem <laughs> partnership and where we find ourselves here in you know in 2021 and the opportunities that executives and business professionals have to leverage the power of partnership. I mean, I know I'm biased, but I feel like if you love partnerships and you're a partnering professional, there is no other time period in the existence of humanity that you should rather be than right now. Right. So partnership ecosystems, kind of what is it? And before we flipped on record, I, I promised I would go first. But to me, right, so like the, the vast majority of quote unquote partnerships, it definitely is this in this channel lane, I will call it. And, you know, to me, whenever I think about ecosystems, it's how can we leverage any and all different types of partnerships, not just sales focused or not just no one dimensionally focused, but they are relationships that can be put in place with outside organizations that can bring value to us. And I think there's more opportunities today and that's growing than ever before, whether it is a single influencer, whether it mm -hmm. is some new technology, whether it is you fill in the blank, companies have opportunities to leverage these capabilities, these new technologies today, much more so than ever before. Talk to us a little bit about this huge word ecosystem and how do you kind of see it unfolding? Mm -hmm. I think what we're seeing is companies used to think, you know, they put, put their partnerships in all these tiers. And what we're starting to realize is that if we enable the ecosystem to work as a whole, around the customer, we are, you know, we're, we're more some with all our parts together. And so what that means is you might have reseller partnerships and technology partnerships and co-sell partnerships. Guess what? They can also partner together for the good of your customer. And when we start removing some of those tiers and, you know, understanding how I could bring multiple partners that we never thought about together for the customer. Well, now we've got an, an ecosystem strategy. So I think it's it's removing um, removing the old, you know, gold, silver, bronze, and saying, okay, our top partners might look different depending on the customer at hand. And so how can we leverage our partners as a whole? And before we couldn't, we didn't have the data. So I think it was a data problem, honestly. Um, and now uh, if, we, if we are looking at the sum of all of our parts together um, and, and who's surrounding the customer at what stage, the customer is going to win more. But if we're playing this old game, um, you know, the customer loses out, you know? So I think it's, I think it's definitely a sum of all its parts. And, you know, we can't, I'm, I'm of the school of thought that sure, you, you're going to have partners that do a ton of revenue with you and they might be your top partners, but there's also partners that can come in there and allow your teams to do even more. So that's, that's how I look at the ecosystem. And, and it's just more interconnected than it was before. Yeah, I love that. There's so many things that you said there that, uh, that really resonate with me. I mean, I, whenever I think about kind of traditional business, traditional channel, it's all about, hey, we have these widgets, we have these products, services, right. whatever. How in the world can we get them sold and distributed and, and sent down the lane? And we're, you know, traditionally, we've just been so product or service focused, 
right? And then to kind of geek out for a second, you have this guy, Clayton Christensen, that comes to town. He's talking about jobs to be done. He's like, you guys have had it all wrong. You actually need to flip the script. And you said this exactly. Think about the customer. The customer always gets to win in the end because they vote with their dollars. And so <laughs> how can we reverse engineer you know, what it looks like. Well, if you start with the customer, you know, like traditional business school school says, you have to know your core competency, stay within your core competency. But then you have, you know, these different thought leaders saying that companies that win are the ones that can make the biggest easy button. Understand what your customers mm -hmm. want and figure out how to be more, you need to be solutions oriented, not product or service oriented, but be solutions oriented. Well, there's, there's a contrast between those two because if we stay within our box, right? We stay within our core competency, but we're told that we need to make the, the easy button bigger. We have to be more solutions oriented. That's where partnerships come in mm -hmm. because we have the ability to now connect to all of these different complementary service providers and go from our small easy button to a really big easy button that's in a sense what an ecosystem is. Right. And that's going to define the winners and the losers in the next decade. And we've really fast forwarded. So, you know, it's going to look different. The, there are up and coming companies that have an ecosystem strategy really early on. And it's, you know, surrounding the customer and bringing in the right partnerships. I mean, yeah, they can disrupt an industry that has been the Titan, Titan leader for years. So every company should be thinking about how they are going to operate their own ecosystem strategy. How can they interoperate in other ecosystems? It's complex and, and CEOs need to be thinking about this because it could kill your company. Yeah, it's, it's, it will be the difference between success and failure, I believe. I mean, the, the data has already proven itself out. As we teach and preach, there's three ways to grow. Organic, we're going to build it ourselves. Acquisition, we're going to get the checkbook out. We're going to buy our way to growth. Or the third way is partnering. And to your point, I think there's so much technology that's being infused into our world uh, the globe is shrinking. You know, we have this, this globalized economy almost every day. I'm on Zoom or I'm in conversations with people in Europe, in the Middle East, in Asia. It's amazing how fast the world is moving today. Companies can no longer compete just organically. It has Absolutely. to come through partnering. And that's going to be the game changer. Uh, Cassandra, you have a, a rich history in partnerships throughout your career, and then now you work with large organizations, mid-sized organizations, helping them leverage the power of partnership. I want you to talk to some senior executives, talk to some CEOs. Uh, what's kind of some first steps? What are some first things that they need to do whenever it comes to building a strategy around leveraging what ecosystems can do for them? Well, number one, it's, uh, it's, you know, getting in with someone like you that, <laughs> that can help define it if you don't know, right? So that's number one, learning. Number two, um, I definitely think we're going to see in the future, a chief ecosystem officer, they will have a seat at the table. And yeah, they're going to be delivering revenue to the business. And that's going to be a huge expectation. So how can we grow that you know, future leader um, and, you know, CEOs need to understand that they have to provide that person a seat at the table. Um, it's, it's starting to happen because of this pandemic. Um, you know, companies that didn't have a strong partnering background really got, lost lost a lot of deals during the pandemic that were won to competitors who had that strategy and had the insight and knew who was you know we have a combined solution we're going to we're going to get this done so i think if you haven't learned from that um 
you know, you, you have to figure it out. And, and, you know, the up and coming leaders, they have to be thinking about this. Um, I think the more, the more you ingratiate um, partnerships and channel into your strategy the more early on, um, the better relationships you're going to have um, going forward, which is also a difficult task. Um, so I definitely see a future where that person will have a seat at the table that person will be attending board meetings and that person is going to be driving strategy. So you have, you know, these organizations have their direct sales team, right? Let's say the, the mm -hmm. average good sized company out there, they've got their, their direct sales team that's doing their thing, right? We've got mm -hmm. our channel team, our, our channel program that's in place. And then we're going to start to stand up this, this ecosystem organization thing that's a little bit of this new beast that we're all going to have to figure out. How do you see those three working together? Well, it's gonna have to be collaboration. Um, there's gonna have to be very defined roles and responsibilities. Um, I think, I think, you know, in, in an old school channel, there's lots of um, conflict between sales and channel. And honestly, it, it doesn't have to be that way. So yes, a channel is gonna drive more and you know, as much as or more than direct, but there's also a lot of opportunities where, you know, especially when we're, we're selling solutions that are you know, a subscription based, where sellers and channel side need to work together to you know, drive more value for the customer um, and drive bigger deal size for the customer. So I think, I think it's, it's, it's working more hand in hand than we've seen in the past, where the past is we don't talk and we actually compete. Um, you know, I think we're still gonna have where, where you compete on deals, but I also think there's where we need to come together on deals. And, you know, some large organizations have figured that out. And, you know, I can name, I mean, Microsoft, they are running a solid ecosystem strategy. Um, you know, I think you're starting to see them actually um, look like they might become the number one cloud leader. Like, is that possible? Well, look at what they did they came at it from an ecosystem strategy. They were old school channel and that's how they went to market. And they have really changed in the last four years. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a true testament to what can happen when you reach across the aisles and you start leveraging everybody together. You also are going to have that competition side too, but could we limit that and sell more? So that's something that we also, I think, have to look at in the future as we go towards more of an ecosystem strategy. Yeah, one last question for you before we let you go. And the, the word that kept popping into my head as you were talking through that was uh, culture. You know, the, the culture inside of organizations tends to either be, and we work with hundreds and hundreds of, of companies across the world doing this partnering thing, but it seems that I can, I can peg I can peg these companies' cultures either partnership centric or more kind of direct sales. We're going to do it our own. We're more sales, uh, kind of organic growth centric. And in the future, companies will number one need to leverage the power of partnership in order to thrive. And number two, that doesn't mean just do it or have a program, it really is a company wide culture. I'd love to, to have you as we wrap up here, I'd love to have you just kind of share your insights throughout your career of, of what it means to have a company that is partnering culture centric. Yes, um, I mean, the company I worked for prior to founding this company was a partner centric company. So go figure. Um, and it is about, um, you know, at the top, they, you know, we had our cultural values and we all, they also focused on partnering with companies that, you know, not only could, you know, help the customer, but also culturally was a match. 
And so if you can do that, and then you also bring it all the way down to um, the teams that have to be working across the aisle. And it's not just sales and channel, it's implementation, it's product, it's so many facets of the business. And um, so it's top down. And that's why I say we're going to have that chief ecosystem officer. You know, I don't know how far into the future it will be, but we will have that because somebody has to be, you know, driving that culture message. And if you have somebody at the top that has a seat at the table, the, the, everybody below really starts to understand that, look, our partners are, are here to stay and we have to be working across company, period. And we have to do it well. Yeah. So you're going to have to hire different types of people, more collaborative. Um, and you also have to pick your partnerships, I think, in the right manner too. Um, because if you drastically have different cultures, I'm sure you see that that brings many challenges that never go away. <laughs> well, what's interesting is when partnering is optional, there's you, you can right. say no to it and you can act a certain way. But when partnering becomes essential for your company's mm -hmm. not only ability to thrive, but really survive. And I think that we'll see that definitely over the next decade and probably over the next several years, uh, just that fast, it'll play its, it'll play its way out, but uh, it'll, it'll definitely be interesting to, to see unfold. But Cassandra, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing thank your you. insights with us. And it's going to be great uh, watching you and partner tap as you, as you guys uh, continue to, to evolve and go and grow. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. Partnernomics podcast is brought to you by Partnernomics. Learn how to leverage the power of partnership. To listen to more episodes of Partnernomics podcast, visit Partnernomics.com.